And um, when I was uh, 16, in, in the parish that I went to, you know, I, you know, I grew up in, uh, so I was born in 1970, and I'm sure like a lot of you, um, religious formation, or what we used to call CCD back then, was just paper shaped butterflies and you know, that sort of stuff. So when I, was, uh, when I was 16, I got involved in a youth group called Youth for Christ. You heard of that? Um, Billy Graham started, was one of the first employees of Youth for Christ back in the 40s, back in the, the sort of pre-Jesus movement at the tent meetings and things in middle America. So I got involved in Youth for Christ and um, I went to a went to a conference, actually it was a concert, like a Christian rock concert, and um, and heard a speaker talk about being saved and accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And, um, so my best friend at the time, well, was still my best friend, a guy named Matt, uh, we'd gone to the conference together and um, decided that we should respond. We should say this little prayer and become Christians and invite Jesus into our hearts. So we stood up and you know, an altar call and walk down front and said this little prayer, and then that was it. We were Christians. So, baskets. How they this make olive oil here and here. You have two wooden posts standing up, right? vertical and one horizontal across that ties between the two and in the center you have a weight stone tied to a rope which you release to press those baskets filled with crushed olives from there soon you will see the oil dripping on the side to this channel <coughs> and notice that this channel empties to the ball right there and when you've done so, you rest a little while and you let the oil float. There is water in, the, in that oil. That sinks and you take from the top what you call the extra virgin olive oil. The name of the church, the Church of Heptapigon, which Steve told you on the bus translates into the seven springs. We do have seven hot springs in this area. And hot springs are not unusual if you remember that you are in the Jordan Valley, which is part of the Syrian African Rift. And usually we're learning about the history of this church. But I'm stuff. going to show you where we're going next. Well, there's nobody there, so you can get a scene inside the church. This is actually marking the place where Jesus did the miracle of the multiplication and loaves of fish. And it was, by the way, a real miracle. It was not just teaching people to share. It was a real miracle. And under the altar here, there's still a stone, which is from the first century. Christians came here from the very first century and acknowledged that as the place that marked the multiplication of loaves and fish. And right under the altar, I'll show you a picture of it in a minute, is the loaves and fish that were from the fifth century church that was here.
buying me a television when I was a kid. He says, we're going to learn to read and to ask questions and to think. And I am forever grateful to my father for that because he built into me an insatiable curiosity about things and I ask questions about everything. And here I see charcoal fire and I said, why doesn't it just say fire? Why does it say charcoal fire? Maybe there's gold here if I dig deeper. So I take my iPhone, which Janet is doing now, and I have a program on here called Logos Bible Software. If you want to get it, it's go to logos.com forward slash Steve Ray and you get a 15% discount. But I say that because I've been using this program since 1990 and I have on there 5,000 books, Bible dictionaries, search engines, fathers of the church, everything. So I can search right from my iPhone anywhere in the Bible where it says the word charcoal. It only pops up twice in the whole Bible, charcoal. Well, now I know that I'm getting somewhere because if it's only used twice, there's something rich here. And both of them are in the Gospel of John. John is giving us a hint. John is saying, I'm going to tell you something very important here. If you have the eyes to see and the ears, and if you take the time to dig, put the scuba gear on and dive into this book I'm writing to you. There's many levels in the Gospel of John. So I look up the two places where it says charcoal fire, and I find something very interesting. The first time charcoal fire is used is where we're going to be in a couple of days in Jerusalem on Mount Zion where Peter denied Christ. Hello, Mom and my brothers and sisters. This is Rick here at the Sea of Galilee. Hope you're all enjoying at home. I'm very, it's a very privilege to be here in the Holy Land. It's a wonderful opportunity with Steve Ray and Vince Ray and also with Father James and also Father Bob. They made the children a wonderful experience. Hi, Krista, Kimberly, Justin, Elizabeth, Brian, Carol, and Rich, and all of our friends from the St. Matthew's Bible study class. We're standing like Carmelites too. And we're standing here by the Sea of Galilee with Steve Ray and Janet Ray and Amir and Father James and Father Bob. And, uh, We're having a wonderful, wonderful trip, and it's just learned so much. And seeing all these holy sites has been a dream come true. Hi, Clea, Tiro, Elijah, and Jacob. I pray for you guys today at all the holy sites. And we ask that we a special prayer for a miracle in your life, for Jesus multiply the bread and the fish. So it should work, I hope. <laughs> Somebody has to be here for the